Hello there, everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's edition of Peter and Ralph's Weekly Chat. I am joined, as always, by my friend and former colleague, Ralph Hebgen, who is a former superstar equity analyst. Um, that's what you wanted me to say, right? Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I, okay. The, okay. Check, check is in the post. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. Uh, anyway, this has been a massive week. I think that you all agree. Uh, today, we're going to discuss, as always, three things. Um, so firstly, we're going to look at uh, the UK budget. Secondly, what is going on with banks at the moment? And <laughs> thirdly, uh, we are going to be talking about the latest developments in AI. So with regards to uh, the first one, we will talk about the budget because, you know, hopefully you have heard by now <laughs> uh, that there was uh, an announcement. I mean, some people, I mean, they, I know they keep this sort of thing really quiet. Um, but um, but yes, uh, we had the budget. It was um, uh, Hunt's first ever budget, Chancellor Hunt's first ever budget. Um, and I think it would be fair to say that what he was able to, this is going to sound strange, but what he was able to unveil um, was more impressive than <laughs> than perhaps oh. people had thought um, in November last year. I'm so, waiting for where this was going to go. <laughs> yeah, okay. I just want to say these things in a more entertaining <laughs> way, right? So, um, so anyway, yeah. So I think that um, the, the other thing as well is that budgets are never perfect. No one, no, you know, a hundred percent of people are never are not satisfied. Um, Labour has has said this is a budget for rich people, um, and I think that, you know, the the thing I've I've always said is that, um, you know, the only the only budgets that are generally generous are the ones that happen just before a general election because that is when governments want people to vote for them, so they kind of save they hold stuff back to give them nice things um to make them vote for them so i think generally speaking the pattern that i tend to see is um especially if there's a regime change first budget is pretty awful because um they have it, the party who's in charge has to put in new policies and things they also will do as they say kitchen sinking um all the bad stuff they blame it on the previous regime um and then you know so that's why that's bad next one is still not great because the policies have probably not had time to actually, uh, you know, to kick in. The next one is not, it could also not be good either because that's, that's midterm. And then just before the, uh, the actual, you know, when, when you're going to reelect, that's usually when the good stuff comes. So, um, so anyway, so I think that this, this is an interesting week. Um, but what is your take on it, Ralph? Well, yeah, uh, absolutely in interesting, massive, massively so. But if you just look at the budget, I don't think there was anything much in it, which was a surprise. I mean, most of it was pretty much well flagged um, and we knew what was going to happen. We also knew that many of the things were already, uh, well, not implemented, but they were flagged that it was going to be impl implemented. For example, uh, tax bans were frozen until 2028. Well, that's not new news. We, we knew that was uh, yeah. what the government decided to do. And so uh, I think that was, a again, a reasonable budget given where we are. I agree with you. No, but no budget is ever going to please everybody. Of course not by the very nature of it. But I think this one benefited the middle classes most, which mm. is uh, in, in my book a good thing. Um, it uh, increased tax in the corporate sector. Uh, we, we know that. Again, that was flagged to happen. And again, in itself, that is not positive but the government needs to actually find the funds somewhere to support the massive spending which is necessary, which has been necessary all through the pandemic crisis and uh, afterwards through uh, government subsidies, etc. We, we know, of course, the times we live in, and that is important. The only thing which I, from my point of view, saw that wasn't expected was a, a very a sort of an esoteric, 
uh, detail of the financial world known as the lifetime allowance. And the lifetime allowance has been scrapped and Labour was, of course, immediately up in arms against this, denouncing this budget to be a budget for the rich, mostly because of that particular technical detail. And so it's just you guys, if you were wondering what that was, maybe I can just uh, take five minutes to explain what that actually means. I mean, first of all, the lifetime allowance, also known uh, as the LTA. Not the Lawn Tennis Association, right? Uh, uh, the, that runs Wimbledon. May, may, did you think that's what it was? I mean, uh, could uh, be. Could I may, be. Uh, so I may be wrong. I may be wrong. I think it's called the lifetime allowance, but what do I know? Yeah. So the LTA is a cap on the total amount of funds which you are allowed to accumulate inside a pension fund before you will be treated in a tax penalized way. And and the reason for that is simply because there is, of course, a tax incentivization for you to save money inside the pension plan, which used to be £40,000 a year and has now actually gone up to a limit of £60,000 a year. In other words, if you have £60,000 a year lying around, which you don't need, stuff it into a pension fund, there it will increase and it will basically buy you an immediate growth up value of something like £80,000 in terms of assets. And, uh, and then that's going to be cool <laughs> by the time you retire. It will have accumulated to, to 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 some money, and and this some money is limited currently to roughly a million pounds. So if you are having a pension fund which is above a million pounds, then you will be taxed on the difference to the tune of 55%. So if it's 1.2 million or whatever, then the 200,000 pounds is not 200,000 pounds for you. It is going to be roughly 100,000 pounds. So that's kind of how it works at the moment. Mm -hmm. The government has scrapped entirely this particular benchmark, this LTA limit. And therefore... It is now the case if you used to have, say, 1.4 million pounds in your pension fund, then the 400,000 pounds in excess of that old limit, 1 million, are now totally tax free and this is now cool. So you can actually benefit from this. And of course, Labour said it is a budget for the rich because, <laughs> let's face it, when I mean, who's got 1.4 million pounds or more in their pension fund? That's a huge number. Well, there is another element here, and this is something which is even more arcane than that. And this is something called a final salary pension scheme. Now, these kind of things don't really exist anymore. They still exist, but they're close to new entrants, meaning that um, if you now join a company and this company were to run a final salary pension scheme, which is now rare, uh, you would not be allowed to enter this particular scheme. The way that works is that you uh, pay some money in or your employer pays some money in on your behalf. And then there are certain technical details by which it is ascertained how much pension you will receive out of this pension scheme by the time you retire. Now, think about back to this limit which used to be in place, the LTA. This final salary pension scheme may promise you to pay you, let's say, £5,000. It's just an example, some number which I made up. £5,000 a year as a pension. For the purpose of calculating how much that contributes to this tax-free benchmark of £1 million, the LTA, this number is times by 20 that is a statutory requirement in order to allow the government to assess the total value of all of your pensions. So if it is 5,000, you times it by 20, uh, that gives you 100,000 pounds. You add that to whatever is in your pension pot and that ascertains that levy. And here is therefore now finally, after all this stuff, 
you, you have all the building blocks in place. The reason that the government has scrapped it is not because they wish to give the super rich another boon. It is because specifically in the NHS, there are well-paid doctors in the NHS, which, so who, are part of the NHS final salary pension scheme. Now, the best paid doctors in the NHS make something like £100,000. I mean, maybe a bit more. I don't know exactly, but that's the sort of ballpark. And let's not be in two minds about this. This is a very good salary, of course, but it is not being super rich. Now, I'm going to make this simple now. Let's say the £100,000 salary translates into something like a £60,000 pension if you work all your life for the NHS, you may accrue that much. Now remember how this is done. 60,000 pounds times 20, that's the number which contributes to your lifetime allowance. 60,000 times 20 is 1.2 million. And there it is. Already you are at a level above your current 1 million, but you are certainly not part of the super rich. It is basically a theoretical number which is calculated so that the government is able to assess the value of your total pensions in this country. And that is the reason that the government has scrapped it. So I'm not going to sound like a Tory boy here, or if I'm on the side of the Conservative government, those who know me certainly know that's not the case. But in this particular case, I think that the criticism of Labour to say that this is a budget for the super rich because the LTA got scrapped is not act not accurate and even labor has basically said we're going to reverse it <laughs> except for nhs doctors so even labor doesn't think that the scrapping of the lta for doctors is a nefarious thing to do so at the end of all this long chat now you know the details it's all esoteric it's all boring but it is grabbing the headlines that's the reason why that is the thing which i picked out in the budget as the only thing which was new and i just thought i'd take the take the opportunity today and pontificate about it a little bit yeah but i think that's a good thing though because i mean most people won't i mean i, I don't think many people are listening to this or watching it i hope you know i'm not being rude or anything but <laughs> don't really know that much about this i mean um you know my wife knows about it and actually you know she came bounding back from work the other day saying have you seen this and to be honest i hadn't actually at the time because <laughs> i've been working the entire day so i didn't know anything um and she she was started talking my my eyes started to glaze over <laughs> um and uh yeah so that was one of those but but you know but you know she she uh that is that is what she does, as in yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of thing, you know, the, the, um, uh, the, the finance. Look, look, so. look, the only reason I know about it is because when I was studying to be an actuary, mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I, I worked, uh, uh, the insurance company I worked for mm -hmm. administered final salary pension schemes, and I worked in that section for about two years. Mm -hmm. So that's the only reason I know yeah. about it. No, 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 it's good, but it's good. It's good. <laughs> Hopefully... You know, everyone's listening or watching, um, you know, everybody you know, find, has finds, finds, this, off. finds this useful. Yeah. So hopefully there's no like sudden drop off. You know. User engagement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, LTA. Lawn term? Lawn tennis is so? No. Anyway. <laughs> okay, cool. So cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, the other thing, I mean, obviously, you know, I'll just say I felt very strongly about the whole, um, you know, childcare allowance thing. Anyone mm. who's um, listened yep. to any of the podcasts this week, point. I feel very, very strongly about that. I think that it is one of the biggest reasons as to why so many women fall out of the workforce or you get very, very skilled women dropping out of the workforce and then going back in, but at doing something completely different or low skilled because it has to fit in with everything because the costs are so great. I mean, a, you know, if you've not had kids, you may think this is a bit academic, but it really is a case of, um, you know, I mean, when when this happened to myself and my wife 10 years ago, or actually 12 years ago, um, you know, really did have to weigh up. Does she go back to work or is it actually worth going back to work? And yeah. to be honest, it wasn't. I mean, literally the difference she would have been working doing full out. Well, 
uh, maybe say three or four days a week. Because remember, at that point, this was before everyone got used to working from home. Um, so you had you definitely had less pay. Um, so doing a three or four day week, um, she'd be probably t- a few hundred quid, you know, working for an entire month. And after paying for all that, she'd have about a few hundred quid left, which mm-hmm. is just ridiculous. And I've always thought this is ridiculous. And, you know, as a headhunter as well, um, I know that a lot of women have, have fallen out of the, the job market <clears throat> precisely because of this. And and the problem is, is if you're out of it, let's say, until school age, which a lot of people mm. do tend to do, um, then you feel, you know, confidence is hit. Um, you feel like you're, you know, everyone's passed you by all the juniors that you, that came in when you were there and you were their boss are suddenly above you, you know, it's yeah. all sorts of things. Very, it's very difficult. But anyway, um, the problem is that, okay, although he has actually said they're going to increase that, um, child's, uh, child care allowance, the problem is no one's really going to be able to get hold of the full thing until 2025. So it's mm-hmm. a bit of a shame, uh, mm-hmm. but at least it's going in the right direction. Yeah, I agree. Uh, anyway, let us talk uh, about the second thing, um, which is really about banks. Now, um, again, hopefully, hopefully this isn't new new news to you, but uh, as in not you, obviously, but um, but you know, to listeners and and, and what happened? Viewers, <laughs> viewers, yeah, yeah, well, I'd be very worried if you didn't know. Um, but anyway, yeah. So obviously, so what happened last week? We had. Um, uh, Silicon Valley Bank, which was very, um, very much focused on the tech industry. Um, what originally happened there was it had a bond portfolio because of increased interest rates. Um, you know, it, it had it basically led it to having to plug a loss, a hole, had, having to plug a hole. Um, it then had to sell. Suddenly it had to sell a lot of securities. People saw that and thought, oh, dear, you know, there must be something wrong here. Um, then you had the um, uh, uh, you know customers taking all their money out, but the problem was they took it all out at the same time, uh, and then when that happens, it all starts to go very very wrong very quickly, um, and then um, we saw that actually it you know it it, it basically failed um and so uh so that caused a lot of problems um we saw that on monday this week it's so amazing because it does so much has happened in such a short space of time anyway Mm -hmm. early um at the beginning of this week you had hsbc buying the uk uh uh, you know part of the svb Mm -hmm. uh, business for one pound so that sort of stabilized that um but um but the other you know the other side of things um you know we the you know the 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 u s side of things we've seen um you know other other things happen but any, we'll go into that in a minute but since then all of this kerfuffle has had a domino effect on other banks um in particular for instance um first reserve bank which is also a um tech focused bank in america because what tends to happen if uh, one company goes bust um all the investors start thinking okay what what else could go wrong and that was the natural you know that was the natural thing so um we have heard you know later on this week um we had the we had um the u.s treasury secretary janet yellen um the chairman of the federal reserve jay powell and the boss of JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon, got together and they got a load of big, the biggest American banks together. They cobbled, cobbled together $30 billion to save, um, first reserve. So the idea was, you know, that would, that would basically plant a flag yeah. saying that, um, everything's okay. Everything's safe. Right. So that's on the America. You know, that's the American stuff. But then that also caused problems in Europe for um, uh, particularly Credit Suisse. Now, Credit Suisse has had a real nightmare few years, had loads of scandals and, you know, a scandal after scandal. The um, management has been a bit of a revolving door um, over the last couple of years. Plans to revive things haven't worked really well. They started selling off various assets and things. But anyway, um, 
they also were they saw their share price absolutely decimated because investors were worried that something bad was going to happen at Credit Suisse. Um, the central bank, Swiss central bank, um, came in and essentially said we are going to support it. But the problem was is that the the um, investors still didn't quite believe what was going on. So we've still seen some weakness. But overall, overall, I think that things have kind of calmed down, you know, compared to what they could have done. But anyway, I've talked uh, too long there, but I just, you know, thought I'd try and lay it out for, you know, all the things that have happened in mm. about the space of a week. Um, but what's your take on it, Ralph? Well, I hadn't heard of any of that. What? What? What, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, look. I mean, you characterise it very well. Um, let, let me just pick out a few bits rather than uh, give you guys a comprehensive. Uh, response here. I mean, the first thing which I unfortunately would have to say is, and there's another bank which uh, failed. You know, mm. this may not be the magnitude of Lehman Brothers, but it is certainly a very important bank failure again. And I don't look behind exactly the details of what it is, but it appears to be trading um, because, to be honest with you, if somebody has a bond portfolio explode on them because interest rates are rising. This is a surprising situation because interest rates have been rising for some time. Bonds have fallen. fallen. This is a, could hardly take anybody by surprise. But so, so I don't know again the ins and outs of it. But um, it would look to me as if it was perhaps a punt behind it to bank on bonds which then have lost in value again and then it would be ascribed to trading uh, practices which are still not uh, appropriately regulated or governed uh, and and that that is what this highlights probably so um the domino effect which you uh, described is the next bit i would like to pick out because that's always what happens. It's it's a bank run and mm -hmm. uh, one famous person, sorry, one, one famous comment on this is if if you want to panic, panic first, mm. which, which is sort of true, but it's hardly uh, going to help the situation because that's what exactly everybody does. You know, mm. you think, oh dear, is, SVB is falling by the way, so let's take our money out before it happens to First Reserve or some somebody else we bank with. And uh, again, the uh, consortium of banks in the US, I think, has have taken a few dominoes out. They've, they, they, they've stopped this particular domino effect from happening. So that is also good. And this is also, therefore, that the, the reason this is very unlikely to explode into a second financial crisis or the third financial crisis. Um, the final thing I would say is perhaps something which is more more positive out, out of all of this. And this is, we've seen HSBC buying the UK banking arm of the bank of uh, uh, Silicon Valley Bank for one pound. And of course, the, the, this all sounds very cool. One pound is not very much, but of course, they're buying all the liabilities with that. So it's, it's, it, it's a lot higher price in economic terms than one pound. The interesting thing here is to just basically pause here and, and understand why is Silicon Valley Bank at all able to actually generate a profitable business model. After all, it's just a bank. Well, it is because it is banking specifically for a group of clients which are tech entrepreneurs and tech startups. These kind of people wish to find a financial, a bank who is uh, well, what's the word here? Who, who is amenable to their to, to their mm. business model? Who seems to understand their business model and therefore is able to aid them in the pursuit and development of it, rather than block them? And <laughs> I, I was just thinking, it's, if if anyone used to watch Little Britain, it would oh, be a sort right. of like you go, you know, you go <laughs> to uh, whatever. It, let's say it was. I don't know, Lloyd's Bank, if you were a tech company, <laughs> and you'd say, oh, I've got this amazing thing. Uh, we need some money for it. And someone sitting there going, Ch -ch 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 -ch. it says no. <laughs> I mean, that's the that's exactly. basically, that's basically <laughs> what it is, isn't it? Computer exactly. Says no. Computer says no. So 
Um, presumably, it, it's that, um, exactly. It's it's that highly administrative, <laughs> bureaucratic response which you may get from the from the bigger banks. I mean, it's just like it's a bit like standing in a <laughs> yes. Oh God. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Really. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. standing in the queue at the supermarket, cash number five, please. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's uh, yeah. So it's it's a lack of personalization. It's the lack of um, uh, empathy with your business model, uh, real or or implied or or uh, expected, which uh, has meant that SVB had a viable business proposition. Now HSB ha HSBC has got access to these clients and uh, these clients are probably also going to develop a, an understanding that safety of a large bank balance sheet is more important perhaps than a perceived or real understanding of your business model. So let's do business with the pinstripe suits rather than the dudes who wear this sort of T-shirt or whatever, <laughs> you know, if it means that we can actually be here tomorrow yeah. and the That's day really after important. tomorrow yeah. and get our product out yes. and do what we accomplish to do. Yeah. So I, 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 I hope I'm not being too naive here, but I think it might actually usher in a little bit of a shift in, in business model and, and access to the tech world from those guys who have the money and, and perhaps also um, a change in attitude from the likes of HSBC, Credit Suisse, uh, USB, it's, uh, U, 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 UBS, etc. Um, all they would need to do basically is to uh, create divisions within the bank who are staffed with people who understand tech uh, business models. And then this might actually be, in the end, might actually turn out to be <laughs> a blessing in disguise mm. and a shot in the arm for the developing tech world. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Let, let, let's hope and yeah. see. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I think, you know, other things that could really uh, come from this, I, th I think that... Um, uh well originally i thought that it would be you could have tech focused banks consolidating oh, but then right. i thought yeah. well the problem is with that is that you know svb was the biggest one and it was the biggest one and it's gone you know it, it it's failed so actually you know uh, like with like sort of merging like with like is not necessarily going to be the idea the you know the way forward here yeah. so i the way i put it is you know is i reckon it's going to have to be a sugar daddy model where you have the daddy um, or the mummy you know just depending on which way <laughs> it you was very important to be gender neutral uh, exactly. uh, absolutely. Yes, exactly. yes, the, the, the sugar you know, parent the sugar parent the, the sugar, sugar parent. parent the sugar parent comes along you know like a hsbc whatever uh, picks up one of these, um, you know, one or two of these uh, other banks. Um, they get access to tech companies that they've probably been dying to get uh, access to for ages anyway. And then the, um, you know, the tech banks, they get access to, as you said, you know, the massive balance sheet behind them, mm. which gives everyone um, reason to feel a bit more calm about things. Um, I think that so that's that's one thing. So I can I think that there will be some consolidation potentially of big companies buying the smaller ones. Um, but I also think it's quite interesting. I wanted to say that I feel it's quite interesting that everything has happened so quickly. Um, and I believe that this has happened so quickly because we still have the memory of the previous financial uh, crisis. And I think that everyone realized how speed um, is was of the essence in order to yeah. stop a, a real crisis. Mm. I mean, as we speak at the moment, and it's Friday, you know, it's Friday night. Um, I think that it looks like it, it's the, you know, the main damage has been stopped. But of course, things could change over the weekend again. I don't know. But um, as things look at the moment, it seems like it's not too bad uh, yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Right. Anyway, got to talk about the next thing. Um, last thing. So, latest developments in AI. I... So 
Aye, aye. And um, so we had, it was that an Ali G thing? Was that an Ali G? Yes, it was. Ali G, yeah, Ali G. <laughs> Again, probably people watching, listening to this, go, who is Ali G? <laughs> Look up Ali who G. They? They're also going to go, yeah, Peter, but... Peter and Ralph, who are these bozos? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they think so they're funny. Like, yeah. Um, yeah cool. So, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there's so many things I could say here, but I won't know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, right, so. Um, latest developments, uh, the latest uh, version of uh, ChatGPT has come out. It's bigger, it's better, it understands photos, which is great. Um, and it's just just more and more, you know, just more and more efficient. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the reason why I thought I'd bring it up is because I really think that this is going to be something, I mean, AI will bring many, many changes across many different industries and things. But I really think that um, education is mm-hmm. a key area that will have to change. It's not a case of, oh, it should change. I think it has to change because yeah. we are going to have loads of people cheating. You know, with the best will in the world, it won't be the people that all, that you'd expect that always cheat that will do it. It will be others as well, because if you're under pressure, if you haven't got, you know, you've got no time, you're get, getting close to a deadline and you've got chat GPT right there at your fingertips, you are going to use it and hope that you get away. Now, there are, um, uh, you know, anti-plagiarism, what is it called? Uh, Turn, yes. Turn It In is a, a name of uh, some software that is currently used by uh, universities and things to stop people from plagiarizing. But I really think that there's going to be a case of every time there's an upgrade in, say, ChatGPT, I'm just using it that one as an example, mm-hmm. there's going to be an anti-ChatGPT, um, and then the next upgrade, and then the next upgrade. And so I think actually what needs to happen is we almost need to go back in time. Um, and I think that things are going to have to be done more on a handwritten base. So I don't think things, I think things like dissertations and projects and stuff are just going to be impossible to do in the way that we've done them because you yeah. can't do, you can't prove that they've been, you know, chat GPT'd or not. Because the other thing as well, the anti-chat, what happens, the anti-chat GPT has to 100% hmm. guarantee that it is always correct. Yeah. Because if you've even got a slight thing there, that's incredibly unfair, you know, yeah. for people and you might falsely accuse them. Um, so really, really, um, you know, really awful so that's why i say i think they will the education system may have to change exams may have to change i feel like so less on dissertations and projects more on face-to-face interaction maybe if at at university maybe seminars contribution to seminars that sort of thing maybe Mm. need to be assessed on an ongoing basis Essays need to be done under exam conditions with someone in a room making sure that you're not getting any outside help. Mm. Um, I think that people will be able, you know, we've got um, software that can understand uh, handwriting a lot better than it used to. Um, So, and we've, and, you know, if you wanted to do something on an interview type basis, um, you know, there's software for that as well. So I Mm. kind of think Mm. that assessments, is going to have to change. Teaching is going to have to change to take that into account. Um, but I think the assessment part is going to be very, very difficult, and it needs to be done now, in my opinion. What yeah. do you think? No, uh, yes, indeed. I mean, ChatGPT is good. But, oh, but by the way, I learned this now. ChatGPT, it stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. Yes. So little anecdote. I thought that was a terrible word to actually terrible marketing so i asked it this invent a better name for yourself than chat <laughs> gpt yeah and it said as an ai i as an ai language model i don't really have a personal preference for a name but how about something like linguo ai or talk mind so i said that still sounds rubbish <laughs> and it says I'm sorry to hear that. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> well, fair enough. So uh, there we are. Um, I think talk, talk mind's not too bad. Is talk mind is not too bad, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't want to butter it up too much here. But anyway, yeah. so um, yes, I, oh, I agree. You, you, could, you, you, could, you could get AI in the middle of that. Talk M A I N D. Oh, right. perfect. Talk yeah. mind. Yeah. You see? Okay. But, but by now, by the way, I can cut this response very short because by now, surely everybody has switched off. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, engagement chart. Boom. Yeah. Oh, it's gone down. Yeah. Right. Cool. Anyway, quickly on that. Uh, yes, it raises quite uh, grave problems, I think, for education. But I think it's almost like these problems are going to be most manifest at this sort of middle level as you go on to university and you do a bachelor thesis, certainly master's, and with absolute certainty, PhD thesis, I don't think there is a lot of worry there because you can't use, certainly not at the moment, uh, large language models to write a thesis for you. They are just not good enough. Also, you wouldn't want to use that in this way because if you want to do a PhD thesis or master thesis, then it what you need to do is research. And it is not nefarious in the slightest to actually ask ChatGPT to write you a little bit of an essay outline with a bibliographical entry list, which it can mm. do. Mm -hmm. And then you have a starting base and then you sort of research around what ChatGPT has started you off on. And so mm -hmm. that's perfectly fine. Uh, equally, when you are at sort of prep school or whatever, you learn to read and write. I mean, well, <laughs> you need to learn to do this stuff. And so therefore, that is not where the uh, risk comes in. I think it is in the sort of larger middle area of age where you're learning how to write essays because that is a high level cognitive mm. skill and I would argue every human being has to learn this in order to go on later in life to professions to jobs which involve more than the most uh, basic uh, procedural tasks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which, by the way, would be rationalized away by AI anyway, very mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. And so I agree, education has to change somehow, but it has to change, I think, in a way which will use the, um, the abilities and the opportunities of AI and somehow integrate them into the learning experience rather than, I, I would say, go back to handwriting. And this is just feeds to, as you said, sort of like turn the clock back. Mm. So I, I I don't know where the answer lies, but I'm, I'm sort of thinking, and, and I've said this to you before, I'm sort of thinking that exams would have to be made um, uh, e even less knowledge based than they may be now, mm -hmm. and they need to focus more on testing essay writing skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you might actually say to me, but Ralph, that's exactly what ChatGPT does really well. Mm -hmm. And you see, there it is now. Let's uh, say that you have a course in history or literature, or whatever it might be, and what you need to learn there is to write considered essays using knowledge about history, but also knowledge about text critical method. So you can analyze a politician's speech, put it into a historical context, write it down as an essay, well constructed using good, eloquent English language. That's mm. what you need to do. And that is not so easy to do. Mm. You will practice it, let's say, by using five assignments during the class. And yes, you do them at home. And yes, you can have ChatGPT write them for you. Guess what's going to happen? You will fail the last exam, the final exam. Yeah. And that's a certainty. You will fail it. Yeah. So in other words, I don't know really know where the answer is here. It sort of will teach students, hopefully, some responsibility. It's not really responsibility. It's more fear of failing. I mean, you yeah. know, if you don't learn this stuff yourself, then the teacher will fail you and you're not going to get uh, get your final grade, but mm. but but again, I mean, I'm sort of it's it's early days, also for me to work my 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 way through this. I don't know where the answer is, mm -hmm. but I would agree with you that education will have to change entirely. I would always hesitate to turn the clock back, and so mm. I don't really want to go back to handwriting, and I also don't think it will change anything because mm. before long you will have AIs which do handwrite, 
Hmm. So you ask ChatGPT to do me a handwritten essay so hmm. that my teacher won't think, see it. Oh, no, but I think, no, with that, though, I think it's more a case of whenever you do write essays, it yeah. has to be under supervision, you know, rather than going yeah. home and writing yeah. that. I mean, I think you, you but, can do that. I think people would just want to get away. A lot of people would just want to get away with it, and they'll go, oh, it's all right. I'll do ChatGPT now, and they'll, I'll wing it. I'll, I'll be all right and on the on the last thing, but when obviously that, that is Fair a high enough. risk strategy. Maybe, maybe that's a possibility. I, I I don't know. I mean, I possibly wouldn't have learned as well as I perhaps did at, at school had I been forced to do everything under supervision. I, or I would have felt hamstrung and, and the sort of flights of intellectual fantasy wouldn't have set in. You you, you know, mm, mm. Um, I'm not saying that they That sounds did. exciting, but yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Ralph? Oh, it's all right. I'm just having a flight of uh, intellectual fantasy. <laughs> Afraid, uh... I, mean, I, actually, <laughs> I was later was I was an equity analyst. I was always introspecting. So look, Ernst and Young, Ernst and Young had a good yeah. ideas room. I tell you, then yeah. you you could basically excuse me for saying one bad word. <laughs> bugger off during your work yeah, yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Go yeah. to the good ideas room. Sit in the sort of chair or whatever and have yeah. a kip. And oh, everybody, nice. and everybody nice. did. I mean, not that I, I'd never worked there, yeah. so I don't know, but I, I understand that was the case. So anyway, nice. so cool. Nice. Um, one th- thought I think I'll just leave um, everyone on, with as well is, is the thought of, you know, I, it just occurred to me that um, that, uh, that actually ChatGPT w- could spell the end of writer's block um, <laughs> in the sense that, you know, if you've got someone you're thinking, I don't know what to write about, I don't know how to start a story, I don't know this, mm. you can ask. And it's really good because it can prompt your own ideas. Yes. But the problem is, is that I think that that could then potentially turn into people not being able to take that initial initiative yeah. and always rely on um, AI to give them that spark. And I think the problem is, if we all end up doing that, there's not much hope for the human race because you need this whole to have that spark. But in order to get that spark, you have to keep trying to get it, I think. Yes. Um, yeah, I agree. And the more times you do it, the more you can get that spark. Um, but anyway, I think we'll better leave it on that uh, mm-hmm. philosophical note. Um, but um, thank you very much, uh, Ralph and Hopefully, um, you'll be able to now go into your good ideas room. <laughs> um, this is I'll, my good I was, ideas. I was going to say, I wish I had one of those. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, uh, so, 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 so would everybody else subscribing <laughs> yeah, to your product. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I've, I've walked into that one. Um, but anyway, right. anyway, well, on that note uh, of positivity, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's say goodbye. But anyway. Thank you very much. I hope you found this uh, amusing and and insightful uh, in equal measure. Um, So uh, to the listeners, obviously not Ralph. I mean, you know, but anyway. Uh, Anyway, well, thank you very much indeed. Um, See you again next week. Cool. Thanks, guys, for listening. Always a pleasure. Bye. Bye.